question, do you want me to repeat it? Um, the question was on liability, say, if you know a sidecar driver gets in a wreck or if something um, you know, adverse happens to the postmates delivery person. Uh, so this is, this is a rather complicated issue for us. Um, I expect it to be postmates. But um, you know, in, in our case, um, you know, since the, the uh, since private individual driving uh, their own car, their, their private insurance covers uh, everything up, up to a point. And, uh, in addition, we have uh, an umbrella policy such that if they're in an accident and uh, for some reason their insurance provider doesn't cover it, we'll uh, step in and uh, provide insurance to uh, $1 million. Should I add something on the um, the, uh, the postmates on our platform, they're independent contractors, so the liability insurance uh, is something that, that, that is their responsibility. Very similar to a service that you would offer on eBay, for example, a product that you sell, that should be yours when you sell it. And we offer an insurance on the, uh, on the item, so, so there is an umbrella as well uh, that covers that. And some certainly high million dollar amount, I, I don't know. That's how we do it right now. Just, just very quickly, I think most of the concepts are so new that, 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 that I would assume that those are companies will and have to evolve what we're doing at this point. There, I mean, there's instances where it's not even 100% sure if it's legal service that's been offered. I mean, of course, we assume that or where there is no, no, no clear justification with that. So I think that's the field that will evolve um, everything uh, in that period of the market. Just using GPS coordinates, for example. Yes. Yeah. We haven't looked into that, no. Yeah. But it's all very intriguing. Yeah. Same. Uh, we we simply use Google as our mapping software. We use Google Maps. I have a question in the back here. Uh, my question goes back to your early days. Can you comment on essentially how you solve the chicken and egg conundrum? You essentially are doing uh, for Spot Hero and Postmates. You're essentially doing B to B to C because you had to get businesses on board before you could uh, offer something to customers. But then customers don't want to uh, sign up until they see enough product. How, how did you solve that chicken and egg conundrum? to finally offer a product that was complete for the uh, uh, parking customer or the, uh, the merchant and the consumer? Yeah, uh, great, great question. b 2 b to c is definitely correct in our, uh, in our business. So it, we always found that it starts with supply. Um, you know, we didn't just go from one day saying we're going to start a business and then get major parking companies to go and list. That's not how they work. They're very old school. There's big trust issues. We started with individuals parking spots. So we got a few of our friends to list their parking spots around Wrigley Field. You know, we had to go through a period of where we're going through and selling on individual spots, even sometimes buying our own, to start gaining some traction, getting word out about what we're doing, building a brand, getting involved, blogging about parking. Then what happened from there was we were able to attract the attention of a bigger parking operator. And then at that point, they're kind of like, okay, you've done stuff related to parking. It hasn't really been in this capacity. They have a need. We have a solution that could potentially fit. We'll go through and do a, do a test. In all of these situations, you know what we found is by having the inventory piece first, whether that's the individual's parking spot or the garage's parking spots, then you have something to actually offer people. And then you can try to go through and get some users to it. And in our case, as you're able to fill their parking spots, then you you get more internal business development opportunities to say, okay, let's grab some other locations. That'll help. That'll help. That'll help. Then you kind of get down, down the, down the line, and grab all their stock and moving on to new companies. And I imagine you've got a minute to. Uh... Sorry about that. Oh no, 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 not at all. I just wanted to make sure. That I can do it. I just don't want to be thirty seconds. Lady Brown, Lady Brown. I like the question. It's an amazing question. Uh, I think if one thing is important. If you have a marketplace that involves three people, ultimately you have to make a decision to either go on a side at the beginning. So I just talked about how we started Postmates and that we have the ability to always tap into the system supply side. What we did is we completely ignored the merchants. 
if you live in a city like San Francisco, you have five billion startups. All of them want to do something in local commerce. They all run to a merchant and want to work with a merchant. If you build your business around the idea that the merchant signed up for a product that doesn't exist, then you probably never get it off the ground. So we basically hack the city and try to enter as many inventory as we can manually. We build a data team, we spray a website, we used, um, we used lots of other clever things to get the data in, and that basically allows you to order anything in the city from any location that you have. We don't have inventory, we buy a shopping list. So, Marketplace with three parties involved, I believe that it's very important to ignore one side and you just have the guts and the balls to, to decide which one that is. Well, um, we are out of time, this went fast, um, but thank you so much for coming and thanks so much to our panelists. Great.